All right, let's have a look at another little animation technique today. We are, again, going to be doing something simple. And the whole point of this is not really about the animation technique itself, so much as being able to see the same animation in a couple of different ways. All right, so perception again. Okay, so simple concept. Uh, and yeah, simple concept, but being able to see it in a couple of different ways. And so here is what we are going to be doing today. We are going to make an animation where the edges of a square animate all in at the same time. Okay, really simple. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's switch over to flow. And we are going to create an empty timeline. We are going to click on the scene name and like we have been doing, let's make it 400 by 400. And then let's change that background color to something nice and dark. Let's call it that. And then <clears throat> let's add ourselves a rectangle. Oh, not that one. A regular rectangle, just like that. And then let's make it 240 by 240. Again, we clicked on that little lock. And then let's make that stroke width 80. OK, nice and thick fat lines. Uh, the other thing we'll do is we are going to go to the fill color and we are going to make it clear. Okay, so we have our square. This is the square that we're going to be using to animate. Now, if we go back and look at that animation, they sort of all animate from each edge at the same time. So let's try and set up our square so that it has uh, like the first part of the animation. Now I do realize that at this moment I didn't have relative mode on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open, I open the timeline. I'm going to select all of the key values at the end of the animation because the playhead was at the beginning. That's where I was making my changes and I'm going to press delete. Now, again, if you didn't see that, what I did was I clicked on the parent track key value. And that selects everything that's exactly the same time underneath it. And then I hit delete. All right. Now let's press undo. Let's select that. And then let's go and say the endpoints are from 0 to 0 0.25. One quarter of the animation, right? Or one quarter of the way around the square. And we can actually get rid of that end animation again. I should be doing things with relative mode on. Um, I'm just going to do that for now. And so now we have the edge. So if I select that, you see how it goes from one edge to the other. Let's do that. Let's just animate it now um, to here. And we'll say, actually, we're going to say at the beginning, the end point is at zero rather than 0 0.25. And that should animate in nicely, just like just like that. OK, pretty straightforward. It's going to animate in. And then we have to do that a bunch of different times. So let's go up to the rectangle and let's call this our zero. And what I like to do is I like to copy that and then edit, paste. We're going to paste in place with key values, which is command, shift, option, and V. And I'm just going to do that with the keystrokes down here. Paste, paste, paste. Paste. Oh, one too many. Undo. We just need four. Yes, we do. R1, enter, press up. R2, enter, press up, hit enter. R3, enter. And now, so now we have four, four squares, all with the same animation going like that. What we'll do now is now we turn on relative mode. This is where it's handy because we're making some changes that we don't want to change or create animations. And we will select R1. We're going to rotate it by 90. R2 will rotate by 180. R3, we're going to rotate by 270 degrees to get those animations in place. And if we hit play, you can see that it animates in. Right. but. We get these weird little uh, corners. 
Okay, so we get these weird little uh, we get these weird little corners up in each one of the corners. That's because we're using the default line cap to um, measure our animations or to have on our our strokes the stroke of the shape, and it it's called butt b u t t and it butts up against the edge of the the path essentially. So here what here's exactly what I mean. So if I select one of those. You see how the edge is exactly in line with where that path is? Let's just undo. If I Even if I double click into it, you can see it with the frame. You can also see it by double clicking in and looking at where the edge of the path is. Now that line butts right up against that. The way that we, the way that we get those filled in, okay, like the easiest way to fill those in is to just select them all. And we're gonna go down to the line cap we're not going to pick round. We're going to pick this one. It's called square. And that adds just a tiny little square at the end of the, the stroke. Okay. And so there we have our animation. Now, the other thing we wanted to do. All right. Um, so we animate in. And the other thing we wanted to do is we wanted to have uh, the stroke animate out in the opposite direction. Pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to select all of those again. And instead of animating from 0 to 0 0.25, we're going to have the end point or the start point animate to 0 0.25. Oops. Turn off relative mode before you make this change. 0 0.25. And now we are going to take this, this animation. I'm pressing command and selecting uh, all of those. And then I'll select one of the other key values at the end. And we're going to align to the left or align to the right. So now we have this lovely animation. Okay. And there we go. We're using a square to animate the line in and out. Let's just play it again and keep it on loop. All right, there's the animation. But there is something wrong with this, and I am going to leave this as the challenge for today. Okay, let's have a look at the two different uh, outcomes. This one is slightly different than the original animation that we showed. Okay, so let's have a look at that now. So what's the difference here? Do you see it? Do you see it? <laughs> Let's slow down our animation a little bit. And Okay. Let's even take off loop so it's easier to see. There we go. Okay, let's look one more time over at the original. Okay, so the timing is pretty close to the same. But the difference is in the original animation, the line starts right at the very edge and animates in all the way. It starts at the outer edge of the square and animates in. Okay, so, all right, so. I can think of a couple of ways to get the animation looking closer to this, right? So it's animating right from the edge of the square. And ours is sort of appearing and then animating and then disappearing, right? Let's have one more look at that. It appears, animates, animates out and disappears, appears, animates, animates out and turns off. Okay, so so this is happening because because the shape has that square edge that's like right at the it has the square line cap right at the end of the line. And as this is animating to zero or to whatever, uh, to zero, 0 0.25, when it gets to that point, and the stroke start and the stroke end 
have the exact same position, then that interprets it as having uh, no stroke, okay? Because the stroke starts and ends at the exact same point in time. And what happens is it gets closer and closer and closer, and then it has no stroke, and then it disappears, okay? So that's the effect that we're seeing. Can you think of a way to look at that animation and reconstruct it in a way that would allow us to have that smoothness of animating out from the edge, okay? That smoothness of animating out from right here, right here, see? It animates smoothly out and then smoothly to the end of the other side, just like that, all right? Now, um, I originally had two, no, I originally had one way of doing this, one technique, and I just thought of a second technique, okay? And um, one of them involves restructuring the, <clears throat> basically restructuring the animation, and the other one uses a masking technique that we learned about last week, okay? So, challenge for today, try and recreate that one, all right? And I'll see you tomorrow.